Today we're here with Brett Blonner from Timkin, and we're discussing wheel bearings. So what should a technician look at when they pull that wheel bearing or hub unit out of the box? The funny thing is, Andrew, is that with regards to the performance of a bearing, it's what you can't see. It's going to be the quality of the material, the seal design, and that's what really leads to the performance of a bearing. So in other words, a fancy finish on a bearing does not mean that it's a high performance or high quality bearing? Not necessarily. If it's painted or e-coated, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a high quality bearing. And therefore, you may or may not get the performance that you're expecting. So what can't the technician see? One of the things that contributes to the performance and durability of the bearing is the quality of the steel. Um, the cleanliness of the steel leads to the long-lasting fatigue life. Um, in fact, um, oftentimes when you look at a, say, a value line bearing, the quality of steel is such that you're not going to get the fatigue life and the bearings will spall. So you mentioned before about the cleanness of the steel. You're talking about inclusions in the steel? Inclusions and the cleanliness of the steel. Um, the inclusion is an area where the uh, spalling will initiate and that tends to be below the surface of the steel. And we've got some good demonstrations we can show you that um, gives you a good practical hands-on example um, how that leads to the fatigue and the failure of the bearing. Let's take a look. Okay, so we have um, just, just a regular um, wire here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fatigue this. We're going to bend it back and forth. And for example, like a coat hanger, when you bend it back, back and forth, what happens? It fails. So we're going to demonstrate that now. And um, it's just like when a rolling element rolls over a raceway, what you're doing is fatiguing the material just like you would with a coat hanger. So we'll use this as an example. So we're going to count how many times we cycle this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 times. We cycled that 11 times and it failed. So now we'll take the same material and we'll simulate an inclusion with a file and do the same fatigue and see when it fails. So this would be like using steel that's not high quality, bearing quality steel. One, two, three. Three cycles of fails. For the technician, what is spalling and how should they look at it or inspect for it on a failed wheel bearing? Excellent question. Um, what I call spalling is the natural death of a bearing. Um, just like the coat hanger, you have a rolling element, whether it's a ball or roller, rolling over the raceway. And that's a cyclical load and eventually leads to, leads to fatigue, just like the coat hanger. And material will actually flake out of the raceway or called spalling. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of uh, this spalling effect behind the wheel? Eventually what you'll see is um, additional material will flake out and it will lead to a humming noise or a whirling noise in the wheel end. Can this eventually lead to end play? Absolutely. It'll lead to end play and you'll get um, some vibration eventually if, and potentially the bearing could lock up. So this hub unit right here, it's got an ABS sensor integrated into it. What happens when that spalling and play starts to happen, can that cause codes for the vehicle and ABS problems? May or may not. A, a spalled or failed bearing may not even be picked up by ABS. It's, you tend to hear it in terms of noise and vibration on the front end. So pretend I'm a shop owner. I am ordering a wheel bearing hub for a vehicle in my shop. I'm concerned about the customer because they've been a long time customer. What should that shop owner or the guy behind the counter or the guy in the shop pay attention to before they install a wheel hub or wheel bearing set? So there's a couple of things. I said, again, as I mentioned earlier, there's the majority of the things that lead to the performance of the bearing, you're not going to be able to see, whether it's surface finish, geometry, the material, the cleanliness of the material, the heat treat. So you really need to go with a trusted brand. If you've got a, a choice to sell a value line and a trusted brand, um, why would you put at risk a long-term repeat customer and save 30 or $40? Good chance that's going to lead to a comeback. The example we use with the coat hanger, that's going to be a comeback. So in other words, probably the most expensive thing in the whole equation is a shop's reputation. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Well, thank you, Brett, and thank you very much.